My name is Michael Joswig. I'm Max Planck Fellow at this institute, and my field is mathematical software. And the purpose of this presentation is to present my field. So, what is mathematical software? There's an immediate answer to this question. So, mathematical software is what mathematics receives as a benefit from the digital age. But let's be a little bit more specific. So, I will present a few software systems and what you can do with them that I have been working on over the last few years with very many colleagues. So some of these are really large efforts. And the first system is uh, still in the making. It's a fairly new system called OSCAR. And uh, it is intended to be a comprehensive system for algebra, geometry, and number theory. And uh, so it is designed to be used by everybody who wants to do computations in these fields. And in particular, it, is, it addresses experts as well as beginners uh, for these kinds of things. The second system is uh, Polymake. So that's an old workhorse of ours. It exists for more than 20 years. And it has been designed for versatility. So the realm of computations there is polyhedral geometry. And it is a system which is designed to be used by experts. The third system is still very different from the first two. It essentially implements one algorithm. I will talk about this a little bit later. And we try to make this as fast as possible. So here the design goal is performance. And uh, finally, the fourth one. So this is match the net. And the goal there is outreach. So here you see a photo that has been taken at an exhibition in Oberwolfach for students. And so uh, it math Match the Net is a mathematical game that you can also uh, play at home. So here's the URL. You can play it in your web browser, on your tablet or on your laptop with your kids if you wish. And um, so this is another function of, uh, of mathematical software. So you can use it to do um, advertising of mathematical topics and mathematical toys and uh, generate curiosity uh, on the way. So you have four very different systems and they have very different features and we will look at some of this. So the first example is Oscar. So from the version number 051 that you can see, you can tell that this is not really complete yet, but it exists and uh, you can do a lot of meaningful mathematics with it already. And the example that I chose here for you is the computation of a Galois group. And uh, how does this work? So here in the first line, so this is actually a system which is written in the programming language Julia. So you really see Julia code here um, in the works. And uh, so we construct a polynomial ring with coefficients and the rational numbers, that's QQ in the indeterminate that we call x. So that's a univariate polynomial ring. And from that, we pick one of these polynomials, x to the 5 minus 2, and create the splitting field over the rational numbers. And that's a number field that we get. That field is called k. And we also re receive a, a primitive element, which is called a. And now the task is, that's the input for our computation, and the task is to compute the Galois group. So the Galois group is a permutation group, a finite permutation group, which operates on uh, the zeros of the given polynomial over the algebraic closure. And uh, so and we receive the group G itself as the answer to this computation, and something else which is also interesting, and this is the C. Let's look at this C, which is called the Galois contents, uh, first. Well, so I already told you, so this group is given as a permutation group. So that's a definition. So it needs to act on something. So what does it act on? By definition, mathematically, uh, so on the roots of that polynomial. But how do you present the ro uh, roots of this polynomial? And so the way that it is given here it is a description, so each of the five roots of this uh, polynomial is given as a rational um, linear combination of the primitive element A and the rational unit 1. And the coefficients are rational numbers, but they might look funny because they are given in p-adic expansions. 
And in order not to clutter the screen, I only chose one piadic digit. So this is what the parameter one here means in this, uh, in this, com in this um, command here. And uh, so the prime is chosen automatically, and this is a funny number, so that's a prime which is close to 1 million. So this is this number that you see over here. And the other numbers are the coefficients. And uh, so this is a p-adic approximation of these roots. And why are these p-adic? Well, because this is numerically better behaved uh, than uh, traditional approximations by floating point numbers. So it's uh, already in non-trivial computation which lets you do that. But we were interested in the group, so what is it? Well, the group is this G, and I can have meaningful mathematical output as C5 colon C4. What does it mean? So that is atlas notation for the semi-direct product of a cyclic group of order 5 times a cyclic group of order 4. So that's the additive and the multiplicative group of the field with five elements respectively. And so this is the atlas name for the affine general linear group uh, AGL15. All right, so that's what you can do with Oscar already now. The version 1.0 is scheduled for Christmas 2024. Stay tuned. All right. Let's go on to the next example. So this is something that I would like to explain in slightly more detail. And uh, so the mathematical objects that we are interested in here are triangulations of finite point configurations. So here is an example. I have six lattice points in three-dimensional space, but they lie on the plane where the sum of the coordinates equals to two. So I have six points in three space. All of the coordinates are integer numbers, non-negative integer numbers, and they sum to two. And so there are exactly six of them, and you see them here. Now, so these are actually the lattice points in the dilated triangle delta 2. So delta 2 is just the convex hull of the unit vectors in, in 3 space, and I scale these by the factor of 2. So that's this dilated triangle. Now, I'm interested in the triangulations of this point configuration, and uh, so this is a subdivision of the convex hull of these uh, six points. So the convex hull of these six points is that triangle, this dilated triangle. And subdivision of those points means I want to use a subdivision into triangles which use the given six points as vertices, but a priori I might not be forced to use some of them. So, and then the answer is, how many triangulations do I have? Well, I have five up to symmetry. So the point configuration is symmetric. So the symmetric group of degree three acts on the three vertices, and this induces an action on the triangulations. And with respect to these, uh, um, this group action, I have five orbits, and you see a representative of one of them. So here, so the first one is the trivial uh, subdivision, nothing happens. And here I have a subdivision into two triangles. Here I have a subdivision into three triangles. I'm, and I'm particularly interested in the two rightmost guys. They differ from the other ones. You can see this immediately. So for the blue ones, there's at least one of the white points. So these white points are the six points that I started out with. And at least one of them is missing. So it does not occur as a vertex in one of the triangles. So for instance, this one does not occur here. And similarly for the other ones. Whereas for the red guys, all the six points are used. So that's why I'm more interested in those. Also in this particular case, all triangulations satisfy a certain important geometric condition. They are regular. Which means that they, you can see them as being induced by a height function. And uh, this is important geometrically. So why am I interested in the two red guys? So they define all possible families of something which is called smooth tropical plane curves of degree 2 and genus, genus 0. So plane curves means because it's a finite point configuration in the plane, and degree 2 is because I chose the scaling factor of 2 here in this thing. All right, so that's the, that's the algorithmic goal. So input, finitely many points in Euclidean space, output, all triangulations, or better, only the interesting triangulations, the red triangulations. All right, 
And uh, so this is what this specialized software MP Topcom has been designed for. So this is the algorithm that I mentioned before. So MP Topcom is very good at spitting out all the possible triangulations, more, more exactly the interesting triangulations of a given point configuration. And one of the things that we computed was we just take the next bigger example in dimension. So we go to three dimensions and we also scale by three. So that is now a point configuration of 20 points, 20 lattice points in, in four space, again lying in uh, the uh, hyperplane, sum of the coordinates equals three. And um, we want to compute all the interesting triangulations and up to symmetry, there are about 14 million. So that's a theorem that we obtained by using this particular piece of software. And it took 160 CPU days uh, on, a, on a small cluster. All right. And why are people interested? Well, this is um, a model for moduli of uh, smooth tropical uh, cubic curves and um, in the tropical setting. And uh, so here you see a classical picture of a classical cubic surface. And so that would be tropical analog. So tropical geometry is a field which has been described as um, um, it's sitting in between optimization, algebraic geometry and polyhedral geometry. And a purpose is that it provides piecewise linear images of uh, algebraic varieties. And that's what, what this is about here. And uh, so we use this, uh, the result of this computation. Um, so for instance, for classifying lines on these surfaces, and the result is a database that you find under the URL, which is given here. So actually, and this is the important message here. So this is a computation, which is way too large to be done by a human. So the purpose of mathematical software here is to allow us to do something that we couldn't do otherwise. And the actual theorem is the database. So that is a theorem which is even too large to write down in a traditional form. And what you see here, which I claimed was the theorem, is just a mere shadow of it. It's a corollary of a corollary of a corollary of that theorem. Okay, so, and this is something which is important without mathematical software of this specialized kind, you couldn't do that. So in order to, for my next thing, so I want to talk about this specialized software Polymake, I, I'm staying in the picture. So then we are still in this tropical geometry triangulation world. And I'm going into the prehistory of the two theorems that you saw before. And so the prehistory starts in the 19th century with a famous conversation of Cayley and Salmon in 1849. And uh, so from which um, an important theorem of algebraic geometry emerged. And this says that each smooth cubic surface in the complex projective space of dimension three, there are exactly uh, 27 lines on such surfaces. That's a famous theorem in algebraic geometry. It has a long history and it has major impact on the entire field. So because tropical geometry tries to explain things in algebraic geometry and related to other things. So it was a natural question to how does this look like tropically? And uh, the first person to set out on this uh, endeavor was um, Magnus Deli Wiegeland. And in his PhD thesis 2010, he came up with a classification of, let's say, combinatorial patterns of tropical lines in these surfaces. And he was able to prove so that something very interesting happens, something which doesn't have a classical analog, namely, Instead of only having finitely many, many lines, it can happen that you have infinite families of lines occurring. And this, despite, even in the presence of all the genericity assumptions that you want to, want to make. So it's an unavoidable feature of tropical geometry, you could say. And that's a very important observation of Wiegelands. Now, as it happened, a little bit later in 2017, Simon Hampe and I found a smooth tropical cubic surface, generic one, and uh, it has a new combinatorial pattern of lines. So new means it is something which doesn't occur in Wiegeland's list of 2010. So Wiegeland produced a traditional mathematical proof, handwritten, 
and um, it, it looks really perfect, but there's a small glitch because he missed a case. And we used mathematical software, more precisely Polymake, in order to, to find the gap in that proof. So that's another feature of mathematical software. Mathematical software complements our skills. Just because it is very different from how the human mind works, we can use it for different things. And so to extend our range, like in the previous example, but also to complement our things by doing experimental mathematics in a meaningful way and to come up with something interesting. And what came out of this is a new classification, which is now correct, and that's a new corrected version of Wiegeland's classification joined with Marta Panizzut, which appeared on the archive in 2019. So mathematical software helped to correct that error. Now, finally, there's an important question to be answered that has not been addressed yet. So now that we know that mathematical software is so useful for all kinds of mathematics, why does it need to happen at this institute? This institute is all about applications of mathematics to various fields of science. And here mathematics software plays a key role because you can also see mathematical software as a um, kind of mathematical knowledge wrapped up into a piece which can be used by non-experts. So this is in this way a mathematical knowledge much more easily than a book or a written paper. Uh, can bridge the gap between fields of science. And uh, so here, again, I picked a few examples of uh, research of mine with co-authors from the last few years. So we, have a, we used exactly these techniques that you saw relevant for tropical geometry. We applied them to biology, more ex precisely analysis of epistasis in microbiome data of fruit flies. So, but we also analyzed um, combustion engines. So this is an engineering application. So what you see here in the middle, it is, um, it is a chart where you have, a, it's a called a part of an engine map, where you have a revolution frequency of an engine and you have the torque. And then the color shading in this particular case uh, is related to NOx emissions and blue is good. And so this is the result of this computation that we did via means of mathematical software and polyhedral geometry and combinatorial optimization. Uh, just a short remark. So this particular computation um, improves pre-existing results which came from uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this is just to tell you that machine learning is not the end of the uh, story when it comes to applying software to mathematical problems also. But, of course, machine learning is another interesting area. And so we also used these polyhedral techniques and the relevant software systems that you saw in order to analyze what happens uh, with special types of neural networks called autoencoders and uh, to, to, to compare them and to, um, to, to analyze how well they behave with respect to out-of-distribution attacks. So this is something that you can uh, see as a contribution to, toward fair principles in machine learning. That is another thing which is really re relevant because mathematical uh, software in the form of machine learning and uh, neural networks is everywhere now. Okay, so this was my short tour through uh, this field that I th think is really interesting. And uh, so I should uh, say everything that you saw here can be done at home because this is all of this is open source software. You can download it from my webpage or the Institute's webpage. And um, if the algebra and the geometry um, are not interesting to you enough, stick to the mathematical game. Thanks to, for your attention. Goodbye.